Yo, what is up, guys? Mr. The Reverts here. Welcome back to the channel. And wow, man, oh man, the past weekend has been absolutely crazy on social media regarding skill based matchmaking within Black Ops Cold War. It's been going back and forth from being the number one trending search on Twitter, I believe. But now that the alpha has officially ended, I want to give you guys my thoughts on SBMM and report on some basic armchair testing that I've done all weekend long. So guys, ever since day one of the alpha, I've kept my mouth shut about skill-based matchmaking. I didn't want to grab my torch and pitchfork just yet and go after Treyarch and Activision without actually doing a bit of research and looking into the situation for myself. While I do trust the judgment of professional Call of Duty players tweeting about, oh, skill-based matchmaking is horrible, this and that, I just really wanted to check things out for myself. Now, I gotta admit to you guys, like I said in the intro, this testing was in no way something to really label as, I guess, something to be conveyed with 100% accuracy because this was done in the matter of roughly a day and a couple hours over. Saturday, I didn't really get to play a whole lot because I had a funeral to attend to, but over the course of the weekend, I managed to gather and collect the performances of the games I played in and the entire lobby as a whole, which I have on screen for you guys right now. And at the very start of my games, when I decided to collect the data, I was having a really, really, really rough time. And I assume that was because the game was pairing me up with players with just anybody pretty much i think these guys are probably the most hardcore call of duty fans because it was kind of late at night everybody's getting off work or finishing up their classes whatever they're doing um and they're also staying up late as possible to you know play as much as possible compared to just the average joe player trying this alpha out for free i don't know there could be a bunch of reasons why but again i was not having that good of a time but then as slowly as my games went on i started to perform better and sometimes even far exceeding the averages of the entire lobby's KD and I was feeling much much better as I'm recording this video there is so so much I wish I could have done to improve upon the testing besides just collecting averages but I had a lot going on this weekend so I deeply apologize for that but like I said I don't just want to give you guys my thoughts on SBMM and base that off purely how I feel about my games so when the beta does come out I'll probably do this video again with more time on my hands and a better job of analyzing everything maybe going over to one of my friend's house and try the beta out there i don't know but yeah those are just all the games that i played and since i thought of recording this video and you know just coming up with this idea now what was pretty strange to me even before i started to collect the averages was every couple games or so of not doing too well or just having a basic game what i call it i was thrown into a lobby where i absolutely shredded like i was dropping choppers going on decent kill streaks like i was performing really really well and in a way that just made me feel I guess I could only describe it as confident, but if you guys have the same experience, let me know down below in the comments, and if so, how many games did it take for you to start performing better than expectations? For the next part of this video, I want to show you guys what some of the developers have to say about SBMM in previous Call of Duty games, and then we're going to take a look at some patents or public documents that disclose certain information to the general public. So all of this behind the scenes information within the gaming industry is legally available to you at your fingertips, like this is what it's for, and I'll have all the links down below for you guys. But the very first day when all this SBMM craziness was trending, uh, people started to tweet out and uh, just look at the previous Call of Duty games and they were saying, oh, there's no SBMM in Black Ops 1, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, which is completely and entirely false because a Treyarch developer even responded to this one tweet that kind of blew up over the past couple of days. And he said that he wrote the BL2 implementation for SBMM. So that is a pretty big misunderstanding within a lot of players skill based matchmaking has been in every single call of duty game now in terms of how toned down it is that's where the big difference is but skill based matchmaking is in every single fps shooter battle royale like any game you can think of halo battlefield call of duty fortnite apex like the list goes on and on there is some form of skill based matchmaking within those games there is no difference there however again in terms of how much they tone that down or increase that that's where the big difference lies now i'll have all the links down below to these documents that state how the gaming industry basically wants to control the player's experience it's pretty crazy stuff in terms of the psychological effect that they're trying to implement into a player's mind but i could literally spend an hour talking about the information within these documents but basically to kind of sum everything up 
Gaming companies want to control the way you play the game and the way you feel about the game. That's the reasoning behind SBMM or engine optimized matchmaking, which is the more technical term for this. Now to me, I believe that what the gaming industry wants to do right now is make the playing field more fair for everybody. They don't care what type of skill player you are, good or bad, they want everyone to have a good experience inside of their game. And this can be done by matching you up with players who get progressively worse and worse depending on how bad you actually do in the game. So if you have a few good games, okay, well now you're gonna get paired up with players who are double your skill level. Ah, I see you've been having a rough couple of games because we paired you up with stronger players. Let's keep you playing the game some more and throw in a bunch of less skilled players. That's how the gaming industry is now trying to control the player base. They want you to keep playing their game and become hooked on winning. In the case of Black Ops Cold War, that's getting the best score streaks, which I believe is why they switched up the system completely. It's really for those average base players, maybe slightly above average, I don't know, but you know, the, the players that play the objective and will frequently go on these four or five kill streaks in a game, but they still fail to get a chopper gunner or an attack helicopter or just one of the best streaks in the game. The system is built for those types of players to give them a better experience. And again, that's what gaming industries want to do. They want to control the player's experience. I don't know how we got here guys after analyzing you know data from uh, an alpha over the past couple of days but i mean we're here whatever again this is just my tinfoil armchair research data analyzer bullshit theory in no way is this something to completely believe 100 percent so please please do keep that in mind as for my thoughts on SBMM, I completely stand with the fact that it does ruin the gamer's experience, especially for those who get into a reverse booster's lobby or if they get into, you know, the lobby of that reverse booster and he just completely craps on them. It does ruin those players' experience. Now, in Modern Warfare, I do got to say the SBMM is nowhere near the way it was in Black Ops Cold War. Like, I personally felt like everyone inside of my games at the very start of Black Ops Cold War or the Alpha to when I was recording my match. I could have definitely competed with like there weren't those players that I felt I could have done nothing about all of those games were pretty winnable in my opinion compared to modern warfare games where I literally stood no chance to compete and I'm not a bad player in no way but in that game I just cannot deal with how strong the SBMM is and it's completely turned me off for multiplayer that's what I'm against I hope Black Ops Cold War doesn't completely have strong insanely powerful SBMM I just want to be able to feel like okay the reason why I played so bad is because of me not because of the lobby I got into but it's because I was not playing the engagement so smart or I should have ran to the objective more etc again this is an alpha build of black ops cold war now the snipers in the game are really really strong because the developers are looking into how they can balance snipers by evaluating the data from this alpha so the snipers are not going to be this strong the same thing could be said about skill based matchmaking it could be a bit strong right now in the alpha and maybe in the beta but upon release it could be heavily turned down so that could be something to look out for within the beta and then upon release i'm definitely going to try and analyze this more heavily within these next couple of weeks here um, but yeah if you really want to make a case about SBMM I would recommend reporting your experience on Call of Duty's official website which I'll link down below um, but I think that's the best way to get some change around here. I am very, very curious to see if the developers are going to respond to the trending topic of SBMM in Black Ops Cold War because like all weekend long, it's been the number one or top five trending topic on Twitter. It's crazy how much traction this is getting across the entire globe right now. So please tell me your thoughts about SBMM down below in the comments. I really want to know what you all have to say about it. Thanks for watching. Again, love you all so much. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.